Today is Tuesday the 3rd of September 2013. And John Davenport, number, another member of BSOL, has um, come over to uh, give a quick demonstration of uh, Braille machines, a couple here that he's uh, <coughs> expert at repairing. Is that right, John? <laughs> Eh? That's correct, yes. Yeah, you're, you reckon you're correct. Okay, so John's going to put this... We don't need any power here, by the way. They're all just mechanical devices. Marvellous. No power or batteries or anything. Okay, well, right. we can start off. You can uh, put the paper in. Yes, yeah, so I'll put the paper in. And the paper keeps rolling in, and when it's in the right position, it automatically stops. So there you can see the um, two rows of braille at the moment, and we'll just wind that out to a fresh piece of paper. Okay, the, there's the paper, and it looks like, what, about six rows of braille there at the moment. I think one, two, three, four, five, six and uh, a few other little bits that he's just started before. So I'll let you uh, just now say the, what you're doing there. Now the machine has six keys plus a space bar in the centre and the first three are on the left hand side of the roller. You might have a trouble there. And the other three are on uh, the right hand side. So that's the three there that John did and yeah. that's the other three there that he did the second now time. Now I'll do six together. Yeah, you can just see six. Yes. And people who are typing um, can have different combinations of dots. Right, uh, we'll just stop there. We'll just turn yeah. it around, I think. Mm -hmm. On the paper, very thick paper. What about a 200 GSM or or something? The paper. I don't know what it is. Uh, all I know, it's thick. It's got to be. Yeah, it'll be probably 150 to 200 GSM. Okay, John. Right. Now. When they get to the end of a page. There's a back, you just push them. Just yeah. like the old yeah, typewriter. Like, just like an old typewriter. Yeah. And then you go to the next line. And that brings up the... And mm. you continue on. Yeah. Now, uh, John's not a braille typist, so it's, it still gives you a bit of an idea of a few of the dots. Are they called dots? Yeah. Mm. So, um, is that equivalent to, say, uh, an ordinary type on a piece of paper? Uh, would that be the size of, say, 12 point, or, or what? How many sort of words would be in that one line, you think? I, I don't know, because I'll tell you why. They have one... They have dots for each alphabet, you know, letter of the alphabet, yeah. but they also have a special dot combination for I-O-N, you know, at the end of a word, where a, oh, yeah. or con, you know, yeah. words that are, that are, um, have got, a common words that have got a, a common start, you know, um, pretext on it, like, you know, you might have con junction, Oh, yeah, now, yeah. That could be those three uh, words for con, uh, letters for con, could be made into one. Oh, I see. So and the I O N could be made into one. So mm. when they're going along, they, they've got to realise with their braille what it what it represents, either a letter or a 
mm. or a combination of letters. Mm. Yeah, well, we don't want to get too technical, but so uh, there's a li little bit more than just pressing the keys. It's um, thinking about what sort of code there is. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And they even have a code for um, numbers. Oh, yeah. They yeah. put a letter, in, I don't know which letter it is, but they put a letter in front and then they have the dots to represent a number, which would be, in the, it could be A, B, C, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, on the front is the uh, nameplate and uh, just a bit about the nameplate there, yes. John. What yes, the nameplate says it was invented by David Abraham and it was invented in 1940 and it has, nobody's able to improve on it or even produce one that was as, as good. Mm. Mm. So is this particular model like XYZ59 or...? Uh, well, uh, I don't know the, the model, but it's still being produced exactly the same. We'll have a look on the internet. Mm. And um, I have got an elect electric one, but it would have just micro... It's virtually the same uh, thing, but it's got micro switches in it. Mm. Okay, now we've got another machine, the same model, brand, um, but the cover is off. So John is just going to uh, briefly, it's quite technical really, but only for a fair few minutes, just briefly um, a little bit of what he's already told me. Right, we have the six keys here, the space bar in the centre, and they all go down together when you press any one of the keys. And that allows the carriage or the embosser to tr travel one space. One space. You can just see the, uh, the chain down there. Just yeah. down there, the chain. Right. A metal chain. And there's also a backspacer there that will take the embosser one space back. There we are. And here at the back is the the device that's actually making the dots in the paper. As it presses down and uh, levers at the bottom here, a bit like um, the teletype machines. Very similar idea. And it's got to the end of the line now, so... Now we go back on the beginning of the line and start again. And you can see those... One of them is faulty because it's not coming back flat. Yeah. Okay, you know, underneath. <coughs> you want me to hold it? No, no, that's right. Mm. Now we have... Okay, I'll just... Right, again now. When we press the keys, a little lever pulls the cam. You can see... Spacer is to do with this um, notched bar. And it comes along each time and jumps to the next. Beautiful mechanical stuff. A few more. And Whichever key, of course, you can press it, still moves it along. Uh, Norm Wilson, who was a member of uh, the computer club way back in the 1980s, uh, developed more 
that could be fed into a computer and it's to do with these little things here that he uh, sensed with light and you had some connection with uh, Norm of course with this this equipment um, no, only with the brailler. Yeah, well, mm. that's what I mean, with yes, the brailler. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. being expert on the brailler, and you expert on the computer. No, I wasn't. I knew nothing <laughs> at the time. <laughs> oh, you didn't you? No. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I can just chop that bit out. Yeah. No. Yeah, well, that's very interesting, yeah. uh, John. Um, how many tools would you need to repair that say 50 different tools different a few oh, different screwdrivers and no i only need two phillips screwdrivers two phillips screwdrivers and Gee. a special tool to adjust the pressure of the of the um embossing which goes in that little hole there oh, yeah. and it, it turns a little nut inside to bring the pressure to increase or reduce oh, the pressure yeah. So how often would you have to do that if somebody is using this sort of daily or? Well, you may, it may happen. I don't know why it happens, but sometimes two years. Oh, yeah. So there we are. There it is with the the, the lid off. Um, quite okay. small and uh, light. How light do you reckon it would be? 5K? It, they're, uh, they are a heavy machine. Um, I suppose they would be about five k's. Hmm. So that's one of John's tasks is to um, fix one of these bars here that yeah. are not coming back flat. It did then. Yeah. yeah. Just do it again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's just the second one here. Yeah. Yeah. Not coming back flat. Mm. Okay, John. Thanks very much for that. Yeah. That's uh, all very interesting for people. Uh, that need to write on paper with Braille.